I'm in a Toyota Camry or a Corolla, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it was here for brakes, so I got front pads and rotors done, right? I took it out for a test drive, and it stopped well, right? It stopped good. Um, and then the owner said she wants to get a brake fluid flush, okay? So I did that. I just went ahead and knocked it out. Uh, bled at each caliper, refilled the reservoir, all that good stuff, you know? Took it out for another test drive, and it is like a completely different car. It is amazing how something that's quite often overlooked, like brake fluid, uh, makes a massive difference. It's like I'm not even driving the same car as far as braking goes. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, so I'm all taking this Corolla for a test drive. Uh, got the front pads and rotors done, complete brake fluid flush. And the final thing was to go to the back brakes, which are drums. Uh, first of all, I took the drum off to inspect the brake shoes and they looked like they had plenty of life left on them. So all I did was uh, adjust the rear shoes and the brakes feel phenomenal. There, it was a massive difference between not like doing everything else except for adjusting the rear drums and adjusting them, there, there's a big difference. I would say there was even a more noticeable difference uh, rather than just getting the front brakes done. So. That's crazy, do not ignore your drum brakes. Uh, get them adjusted properly over time and you'll be amazed at how well your brakes work. All right, so today in the garage we have a newer charger and you're probably wondering what the heck is this thing doing here for? It's, you know, it's pretty new. Well, it's raining outside. You can tell by the rain that's on the car. So the owner drove through a large puddle of water. I'm assuming he was driving pretty fast. And it looks like it tore off some of the pans down here so you could see that one dragging pretty bad and there's a smaller one right back there so he wants me to just remove them so that's what I'm gonna do that sucks right uh, I don't know I don't <laughs> just it's just water just throw through some water and shit starts falling off the car garbage i am back with this toyota avalon and we're gonna put a new stereo in it or radio whatever you want to call it uh this is like my third attempt and this time i told the owner i was like hey you know what do you want me to order the parts i'll order uh the radio all new speakers you know to make and any accessories or components that we need to actually install it in her car so it's what i did as you can see i've already taken this panel off so hopefully everything goes smoothly and we don't have any uh, any bumps along the way. At the moment, when you raise the volume on this radio, at the moment we only get sound out of this speaker right here. Nothing else works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the new head unit first and see if the rest of the speakers work. If the other speakers do work, then we could eliminate like wiring problems, right? We know there's nothing wrong electrically and everything works and we could just go on with uh, upgrading the speakers on the doors. But if we put the new head unit in and still only this one works, then either we have three blown out speakers or there's something wrong with the wiring. So that's my, uh, that's gonna be my thought process on this. Nothing is installed, I'm just kind of mocking everything up. You can see all this stuff is loose. I just wanted to see how, uh, you know, this was all going to fit, if everything was going to work. It looks like it's going to look uh, decent once everything goes back together. Now that I got all of this together and I know it's going to work, I could start putting all the wires together. This turned into a major headache. This, you know, this whole contraption right here just to get this over. This is stupid. And all because the car came with a factory um, subwoofer. That's why it needs all this crap to work. So there was a lot of troubleshooting involved in trying to get this to work. Because initially, uh, the radio turns on just fine. But I was getting absolutely no sound out of any speaker. Um, and it turns out I had the remote wire for the amplifier mixed up with a different one. I was following some instructions that came with all this crap. You know, so it said put the blue with white wire to this and put the solid blue to this and when I did it like that it did not work so you know looking everything over I decided to switch the two wires around and boom we instantly got sound right and with this right here you see how you could uh plus or minus each one basically think of each one as a different speaker 
So if I lower one, it'll lower like say the front left. And if I raise this one all the way up, it'll raise the front right, you know, and you get it so on. So by doing that, you know, I was able to tell that each of the speakers uh, or the wiring going to each door, it's working more or less. It just all sounds like crap. And I do believe the speakers are blown out. Um, so if I, you know, do one at a time, I could hear a sound coming out of them. It just doesn't sound great. Uh, but let's listen real quick. So as you can see, it is working. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and make some of these connections uh, more permanent now, now that I see everything works and uh, put the head unit in and then the nightmare of taking all the door panels off to put the new speakers in. I'm sure it's not plug and play, so that's gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, so I got all of this uh, put back together. It fits halfway decent. I don't like this right here, but there's really nothing you can do about it. There's a, a trim that goes around the radio, but it would only fit right here and right here. It's not gonna fit around this edge, so technically you can't use it, you know, that would sit right there it is what it is everything else she's now got a nice little pocket to put like her phone and things like that and uh it works now it's time to pull all of these door panels off and see see what kind of nightmares await me i'm on the first door had to move the car into the garage because it started raining but here's something I noticed is both of these connectors are the same size. Usually there's a, you know, a larger or a wider one and then a smaller one, but they're both the same size. And the crimping right here just looks like complete crap. If I could get this to focus. Come on. Really? See how crappy that looks? So someone has been here. Someone was doing this. This is not factory. And the worst part about it is... Uh, the speakers in this car, most of them don't work, and when they do work, you know, you hit a bump and it randomly turns on, then it turns off. Well, look at this. This connector is crimped onto the wire. Real crappy job. But the wire, if you pull it straight out how I have it now, it's not really making any contact with anything. And it was just kind of dangling inside of here. You know, so that right there is basically a loose connection and it could explain why you hit a bump and the speaker starts working. All right, so I got rid of the crappy terminals on the wires. These, and I put some proper ones, ones that fit and the wires are nice and secure. And uh, this one speaker already sounds better. Just so, happy with it so far. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out the other doors. Now I'm on the... Uh, passenger side front door and all I did was take off the door panel I have not touched anything else and this is how so someone's been in here obviously uh, and look look how it is hold on one screw on top just dangling around and if we look behind there look at those uh look at those wire connections look at that isn't that shitty wow mm-hmm I wonder the speakers sound like crap on this car. So here's a little bit of a closer look. And uh, so the connector is not even on there. It's not even connected. All they did was they ran the wire far enough to loop into the little, the little hole. You see it? So what was the point of this? This makes no damn sense. Who did this? This is hacking at its finest, people. So I finally made it to the rear doors. And it seems like someone only bothered to change the front speakers because these are definitely original. But look at this. Yeah, they're falling apart here. So. Part of the reason why they sound like crap or they just don't work. All of the speakers are installed. I just have to put the door panels back on each door. But everything is up and running. And she's gonna be beating out of control with this car. Just uh, driving down the road like this. <laughs> Alright, but unfortunately, uh, I have to pull the radio back out. Uh, it's not a big deal, it comes off pretty easy. 
because I forgot to include this little bad boy which is the microphone for the uh, Bluetooth calling um, you know I thought about leaving it out but also I thought about you know I did mention to her the whole Bluetooth thing and the phone so I'm pretty sure she's expecting all of this to, to work so I like got my car like I don't want this crap in my car you know but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install it so I'm gonna pull this back out and then oh, this is gonna be a nightmare I don't know where I'm gonna put that little microphone at maybe running through the dash somehow and and try to come up through the a pillar and maybe put the microphone right here so it's close to you know close to your mouth so when you're talking people could actually hear you all right so it is 100% complete everything is put back together everything works uh, I decided to mount the microphone right here and I got the wire running underneath this panel comes into a dash comes across to the radio obviously uh, everything sounds good everything looks good and I think that's just about it one thing I have to do is tighten up this nut right here while I was down here running the wire look at this so someone was in here at one point to do something and they forgot to tighten this nut the one on the other side is tight uh, this one's loose so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up I don't know if it's had a rack and pinion put on there at one point one point or something but eh, let's fix it okay so you guys just saw the last few clips of me putting the speakers in that Toyota Avalon right well, it's been a few days and I get a text from the owner saying, hey, I don't feel like I got my money's worth out of this. I was expecting to have bass in my car and it just sounds normal. I can't get any bass no matter how much I mess with the settings. So I told her, well, we were on completely different pages then because I was not under the impression that you wanted sounds in your car. OK, I was under the impression that you wanted your radio to work and you wanted your speakers to work so you could listen to music like a normal person <laughs> all right but apparently not so she doesn't feel like she's got her money's worth so i'm trying to explain things to her so i told her well here goes the size of the speakers that go on your door right This right here is an actual subwoofer. I believe it's 10 inch with an amplifier on top. Do you see how something like this cannot provide bass? Something like this, because this is not a subwoofer. Um, you know, so this really sucks. This is why I don't like doing work like this, because it usually comes back to bite me in the butt. Any little problem that they have, all of a sudden it's my problem. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like the only one that's going to get screwed over here is me because either either she's going to want some sort of refund because she didn't get what she was expecting or she's going to go out and buy a subwoofer and an amplifier and I'm going to end up end up installing it for free. Either way I'm getting screwed over because she doesn't feel like she got her money's worth or what she was expecting. You know I honestly we were on two different pages your radio just straight out didn't work you had like one speaker working at best i got it all working you put the volume up it sounds very loud nice and clear everything's crisp whatever ends up happening i'll let you guys know <laughs> and once again we are back with the pontiac aztec that never stops giving <laughs> as you can see it's got a fresh new windshield in it so it's ready to hit the road uh not really <laughs> Customer had an issue with uh, with it overheating. Um, wasn't severe or anything. It just started to overheat, uh, so they filled it up with coolant and drove it over here. Um, Cause they said it was empty. I'm assuming what they meant was the reservoir was empty. Okay. So anyway, so you got this big old mess on the floor, and it's not from the leak. It's from as soon as I took the cap off. Since that tank sits higher than a radiator, everything just starts pouring out on it. Even though I put my uh, pressure tester cap on it, it was still leaking out because it doesn't seal right here where the little hose comes into. So I had to wait and pretty much uh, let all the coolant that was inside of here drain out. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, so the radiator was completely topped off and I'm assuming it's like that because they topped it off before they drove it over here. As you can see at the moment I have it uh, pressurized and the only thing leaking I could find is on the driver's side. Which is right there. All of that is a mess I made from taking the cap off the radiator. But this is what's actually dripping from pressurizing the system. So, I know I'm not going to be able to show you guys this because I was barely able to get inside of here. But you see that wet spot right there on the heat shield for the exhaust manifold? Basically, this hose is uh, dripping on the bottom side. It's It's got a slow drip. Um... So I could find at the moment there may be something going on over here but because everything is all wet it's really hard to tell if something is leaking uh, but that that could definitely cause a overheating situation uh, long term you know if it's dripping it you know it could take months weeks whatever but eventually to keep dripping to the point where there just isn't enough coolant in the system and the engine starts to overheat so Looks like this Pontiac lives to die another day because I think we're just going to need a radiator hose. Alright, so I just got off the phone with the owner and uh, she said there was two people involved, okay, her and her boyfriend. And they said that when the car was overheating and they sent me a picture, so I'll go ahead and put a picture up right now. But they said when the car was overheating, they had been driving for about 30 minutes and it was starting to overheat, meaning it wasn't all the way in the red. Um, but the car was moving while it was overheating and he said he could not get this radiator cap off which I know you shouldn't but I'm, I'm gonna assume it was while the car was cooled down already but he said he couldn't get this radiator cap off and it is difficult to get off so he went over there to the reservoir to fill it up and he said it was pretty much topped off he said he barely added any and since that thing sits higher than the radiator if the radiator was low, that thing would be completely empty because it would all drain into the radiator, if that makes any sense. Um, but based off of what I just saw, radiator is completely filled. That was filled, and he said it was pretty much like that before he even added any. So the car is overheating, even though it wasn't low on coolant. It was completely filled for the most part. Um... So now that got me looking at the fans, okay? So I'm here, I'm just using my little relay jumper and I believe this is like the low speed for the fan. So let's go ahead and turn it on. You can see that fan is on. And the fan over there is also on. So let's go over to this other relay, which I believe is the high speed. So this fan is on on high speed, and that one over there, let me turn this off. So this one turns on on high speed, and that one over there isn't doing anything. Now, I don't know if it's designed like that. I don't know if at high speed, uh, I would imagine both of them are supposed to be the same, but um, so I don't know at high speed if one of them is only supposed to kick in and the other one doesn't. I don't know, okay. But could we have a cooling fan issue here and that's why it was overheating. But at the same time, bad cooling fans tend to overheat while the car is stationary. And they said the car was moving while it was overheating. I know it's not definitive 100% because a car could still overheat even while it's moving of course. You know the air going through the radiator can already do so much. So it does need the assistance from the fans. So here's an update on this Pontiac Aztec. Um, you can see the engine run time right there it says over 30 minutes so I've been driving it around it's not just idling here but I've been driving it around and uh, honestly I can't get this car to overheat you see right there we're at 206 degrees right and if you look at the cluster you can see it's starting to get right up to that next dot and that's where the owner saw the temperature gauge at and decided to take a picture and said it was overheating and that's when they decided to bring it over so it never really got into the red it just got up to that dot right there well yesterday I was able to get it up to that dot 
and by the time I got there the temperature was at about like 200 and I don't know 13 or something like that you can see right now we're at 212 and I just saw the needle move a little bit more see it's going higher so I'm just gonna let it idle for a little bit longer since I just finished driving it and uh, let's see if I could actually get to overheat all right, so that temperature got up there pretty close to the red. It didn't get into the red, but it got pretty close. And at that point, uh, the temperature was at about 222 degrees. All right, and you can see we're back down to, jeez, come on. You can see we're back down to 212. And what happened is at about 221, the fan control, this one, Relay 1, turned on. I went out there, checked the fans, and indeed they both are turned on on the low speed. So because of that, it dropped down the temperature to 213, and you can see where it's at now. Now at no point did we get a high speed fan control. Um, let's turn the AC on and see if we get a high speed fan, or if we get any fans at all. Okay, so AC's on. See this, but you can probably hear it. Guess the fans are on, and they are on high speed. I am in a Lincoln. I think it's a MK crap, and it's here for front brakes. As you can see, I'm all done with the. Well, not done. I'm done with the side that was bad. It was the front passenger side or the right side. And whenever I do brake jobs where it's grinding like this, I like to start with the side that's really bad. You know just so we don't have any surprises or if I do need an extra part I could call the owner immediately and let them know what's going on rather than starting on the side that's gonna go easy because everything is fine and then you know having to call them a little bit later on when like let's just say they're no longer in the area and they can't drop off a part and it just turns into a shit show after that so always start on the bad side right pro tip number two always open up your new brake pads number one to verify that you have the correct pads and number two you want to lay everything out okay lay out your hardware kit lay out your little wear indicators just so you know what you're working with because I cannot tell you how many times I did not completely empty out the box so I didn't know like say I didn't know that we had a wear indicator right so I go ahead, I put one side 100% together, put the wheel back on it, go on the other side. And on the other side is when I realize we have wear indicators. And it just makes a ton more work for me. So lay everything out and know what you're working with. There's even been times where I start cleaning the old hardware, right? Thinking I'm going to have to reuse it. And I open up the box and here it goes right here. Okay? That was not the case here. I'm just giving you some pro tips. <laughs> or I should say amateur tips right but here goes the old rotor you can see how destroyed that thing is here goes the pad that was riding on the back side nothing but a rainbow pad here's a hardware kit 100% destroyed it's why it's important to get a decent set of pads that has a new hardware kit and yeah look at this just rotted away All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the other side and there shouldn't really be much else about this car. So then I'm working on a Dodge uh, Caliber and it's here for rear brakes. See all the glitter on the floor? <laughs> Another thing I noticed is, you can hear this. We're not gonna see it on camera, but this uh, this bushing right here is worn out and the whole thing is moving back and forth. All right, so here's a rear rotor and pad that came off of the, this Dodge. Pretty typical stuff around here. Um, and obviously here goes new stuff. Now in my previous video, I had someone comment saying, why don't I actually show the repairs that it would make for a more interesting video? Well, I usually do show, I mean, things like this. I show like say if I'm oh this alternator is bad the next thing okay alternator is all done right and sometimes I just don't bother showing it because if I show you this you know just so you get amusement out of this crap there's really no need to see this I'm sure all of you guys have seen brakes there's no reason 
you know to see this really <laughs> uh, so i hope that makes sense that's why sometimes i just don't include after i diagnose a problem or, or i show you guys what's wrong i don't include the actual repair sometimes eh, whatever anyways i just had a dodge journey show up here right she had a clunking well, not a clunking she had like a humming noise so i i assumed it was going to be a uh, wheel bearing right Take it off for a test drive and sure I could hear some it doesn't sound like a wheel bearing but something funky is going on in the front left side. She said her boyfriend had changed the uh the brakes all the way around on the car. So he got new pads, new rotors. He said he bled the brake system. I'm like, alright, whatever. So I take off the front left wheel just to have a look at everything because something just sounded a little bit weird. And tell me why there is a rear rotor on the front of the car. You know how the rear rotors are like a single disc like this? a solid piece of metal and then the front ones are usually like uh like they have the veins in the center right it's like a double side i don't know what to call it <laughs> you get what i'm trying to say okay the front rotors are way thicker compared to the rear ones so this guy managed to put a rear rotor in the front of the car and the slide pins were fully extended the the piston on the caliper was fully extended and it was going to get nasty really fast had she kept driving that car so um, she's supposed to bring it back for me to fix it. I don't know if she will, but if she does, I'll be sure to get, uh, get some footage of that for you guys. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video right here because I want to touch base a little bit more on the story I just told you guys with that, uh, rear rotor on the front of the car. So, I took it apart. Once I realized what was going on, I told a lady, yeah, this needs to get fixed immediately. It's extremely dangerous. Um, right, so I gave her a quote for fixing the front brakes i told her really honestly i would like to go over all of the brakes because if he made a mistake like this god knows what else he did right so she's like yeah that makes sense so she's i gave her a quote for pretty much going over the front doing the front brakes and going over the rear brakes because even though he had just done the brakes just a few days ago the rear one of the rear rotors had scratching on it already like grooves cut into it like something is not right it's why I gave her, you know, the quote to redo this stuff and check it all over. And she was just amazed. She was like, I'm never going to let him touch my car again. Right? So the plan was for her to go to AutoZone. And AutoZone, she called AutoZone. They agreed to replace all of the pads and the rotors. Because initially they messed up. They sold her three rear rotors and one front rotor. And it's why her boyfriend, when he came across he did the back brakes and then when he came across the front and noticed they had two different rotors he said he thought it was weird but he just made it work um so she said to leave the part the wheel off the car because he was going to come pick her up and look at what he did wrong right before i get working on the car and blah 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 so the initial plan was to leave the car with me she she was going to go with him to autozone to get the new parts and after he stopped by and looked at the car, they got in his car, they talked for a few minutes, and they came out, and all of a sudden, it was like a change of plans, right? She was like, you know what, I forgot my debit card at home, so I have to go home. She goes, you know what, I'm just going to take the car with me, and I'll bring it back later, okay? And at that point, I already knew what was going on. Basically, her boyfriend saw his mistake, and he figured... Hey, I could fix this. I know what's wrong now, so I could fix it myself. Why are you going to pay this guy to fix this? So she was like, yeah, sure. We could save the money, you know? So at that point, I already knew what was going on, and I knew what they were trying to pull. So at that point, I told her, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, you could take the car to your car or whatever, right? But you have to pay me my, basically, a inspection fee. So she had this look on her face that she was kind of shocked. And so I charged her the inspection fee and I told her this fee would get deducted from the initial price of working on the brakes when you bring the car back. And to nobody's surprise, she didn't bring the car back. Which is fine, you know, I got my uh, inspection fee out of it. And she let her, I'm assuming she let her boyfriend fix the car so she could save a few bucks. I wish her the best and hopefully he doesn't screw up anything else on the car because that, that was the first time I've ever seen something like that. And... I wish I would have got a picture of it at least, but it just didn't occur to me at the moment. But yeah, first time I ever seen someone manage to put a rear rotor on the front of a car. Another thing I noticed on this caliber is 
the amount of negative camber on the rear wheels is crazy well this wheel when you jack it when you jack up the car the whole uh, trailing arm just moves back and forth the bushings that hold the trailing arm like to the uh, uh, the control arms whatever the hell you want to call them they're severely worn out the whole thing just moves come look at this look how bad that looks it doesn't really pick up on camera too well but in person it's like extreme negative camber and you got the same exact problem on this side you're probably not going to see this but this whole thing is rocking up and down and i could see the the bushing right there i could see that bolt moving inside of the bushing this is crazy that's hail I'm out in this uh, trailblazer with a, you can see the Christmas tree of lights on. And that old woman is hauling ass. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just finished doing the front pads and rotors on it. And the owner actually brought it by because some guy looked at it real quick and told him he needs front wheel bearings. So he came over here with, uh, you know, a complete kit that he bought off of like 1A Auto. They came with two front wheel bearings, front pads, front rotors, and I gave him a quote just for the wheel bearings alone. So I jack up the car, I look at it, and I told him, well, there's nothing wrong with your wheel bearings, it's just the brakes. So he couldn't believe it because it was a lot of wasting money and blah, 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 right? So got the brakes on, taking it out for a test drive, and it's all good now. All right, so let's have a little bit of a interactive video. Off to the left here, we have that blue truck that's a no crank. Uh, possible starter and over there we have the yellow car back there you can see it's uh we have some flood issue going on with them driving through a puddle and uh, the engine turned off so choose which one you want to follow